Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is modified game of NIMP and it is a medium level problem. So the problem says it's a modified game of NIMP and we expect it to be somewhat related to it. But uh, we will observe that uh, it is actually non-related, completely non-related. You can actually solve this problem without any knowledge of uh, prior game theory. right? So, uh, this problem essentially says that we have been given an array of n elements and there are two players. Now, each player will pick an element from the array and remove it if the XOR of all the remaining elements becomes 0 after the removal of the selected element, then the person who picked that particular element will be, will lose, right. So, this is basically the whole problem statement. Now, let us consider this example where they have said that there are three numbers, 3, 3 and 2, right. So, what happens, uh, let us say if this person 1 removes this particular element 3, right. So, now 3 and 2 will be remaining. Now, the person 2 will remove this particular element 3 again. Now, person 1 will remove this particular 2 and the there will be no remaining elements. So, the XOR will be 0 and that is why person 1 who was the last person to remove will lose. Similarly, let us consider this example 3 and 3. So, in case we have 3 and 3. The XOR of all the initial values is essentially 0. So, since the XOR is 0 in the starting only, that is why person 1 will win. Right? It is always expected in such games when uh, the initial value or the initial condition is itself satisfied, then the person 2 must have made the turn. Right? This is uh, always assumed. Now, uh, how can we actually solve this problem? Our task is to find, like for both player 1 and player 2, the goal is to prevent the XOR being 0. Right. So, let us say we want to prevent the XOR to become 0, become 0. Right. This will be the primary goal for both, both player 1 and player 2. How is it actually possible? Let us consider there are multiple elements. Let us say there is an element A present some number of times, there is an element B present some number of times, there is an element C present some number of times. Right. So, uh, what we can clearly see is we will try to find out the situation when the XOR becomes 0. Uh, let us say this was uh, A and B here and C here as well. So, now you see the frequency of A, element A is 4, right. This XOR is itself 0. Similarly, the frequency of element B is also 4. This XOR is also 0 because we know that A XOR A is always equal to 0, right. Now, these are present in pairs. That is why I am talking about that their frequency is even. These are present in pairs. That is why the XOR is 0. Now, we have this third element C, which currently has the frequency 5. Right. Now, if you remove a C from this particular column, right, what will happen? This frequency will also become even and this XOR will also become 0. So, if all the XORs are 0, that means this will be the position where our player will lose. That means the only way or one of the ways to make all the XORs 0 is when all the elements have even frequency, right. So, let us say there are three different types of elements and all these three elements have even frequency. This is the case when the XOR will become 0. But you will find an interesting way that uh, there will always be a case when you will be able to make at least one of the columns non-even or an odd column. So, let us see how we can do that. So, in this particular case, this was the case when there were two even columns and one odd column, right. That means, this was the case when there was only one odd column, right. And whenever, whenever there are at least or more than one odd column, more than one odd column, more than one odd column, there will always be a way. So, let us consider our example as well. So, let us say we had A, 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 this is an even column, we have B, 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 this is an odd column and then we have C, 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 this is an odd column, right. Now, this XOR is 0, this XOR is B and this XOR is C currently. If I remove one from this, this XOR will become 0 because now there are even values, but the total XOR is still B, right. So, you see when there are more than one odd columns, there is always a way to remove an element such that we do not lose. Now, let us consider the case when there is only one odd column. So, basically, I divided the whole problem into two different cases. So, case 1, 
is that only one odd column and case 2 is that when there are more than one odd column. Now what essentially happens is we have discussed this particular case when there are more than one odd columns that means there is always a way to make a move so that we do not lose. What happens when there is only one odd column? So let us consider this particular case A A A A right. This is only one odd column. So basically whichever player whichever player moves first will lose the game. Why is it so? Because let us say A element is here right. So the player 1 removes it right. So after it all the values have become even right. After it all the values have become even. So player 1 as soon as he makes the move the total XOR will become 0. So that means if there is only one odd column, the player who makes a move will lose the game. Now when there are more than one odd columns, how long will the game continue for? Right. So this is our problem. So you will see that whatever the game is, uh, let us say we have a current state of the game. As long as there are more than one odd columns, the game will continue, we know it for sure. But the game will eventually be reduced to one odd column. Right. So, the game will eventually be reduced to one odd column. So, let us say this is the last column and let us say that the frequency of all these elements, let us say uh, these were C1 elements, these were C2 elements, these were C3 elements. So, we removed C1 plus C2 plus C3 elements, right. Now, if this frequency is odd here, the player who will be taking the turn will lose and the player who will not take the turn here will win, right. So, this is our final state. Now, how do we know that which player will actually come here? This will actually depend on how many elements are there in the final array. So, how do we find it? Let us say we had this configuration 2, 3 and 3, right. So, let us say this was this was the only odd, odd column and this was the even column. So, I said that as long as there are more than one odd columns, it is always possible to make the move. Right. Here it is only one odd column, but we also have an even column. So, player 1 will start moving from here. Right. Now, you will see that there are two odd columns. Right. Now, the number of odd columns have increased. So, now player 2 will make this move. So, eventually, the game will be reduced to a single odd column. Right. And whose turn will be here? So, it will be like we made C1, we made C, C1 plus C2 turns. So, in this case, both C1 and C2 were equal to 1. So now player 1 has actually the turn to make in this particular column, right. So player 1 is going to lose in this particular case. So how are we actually arriving to this proposition that player 1 will be making the move here. Let us also consider that this particular value will actually depend on the total number of elements in the array. So you will always realize that whenever we have one odd column left. The final move will be made by the player which is equal to the number of uh, number of elements in the array, right. So for example, when the number of elements in the array is odd, right. So let us say when n and 1 is true, that means out of the two players, player 1 will be making the move and whenever n and 1 is false out of the two players, player 2 will be making the move, right. So let us say, let us consider the small case when there is only one column and there are let us say 3 elements, right. So in this case, the number of elements and 1 is odd and the player that will be making the move is player 1, right. So you see the total observations or of our observations has finally reduced to this particular point that whenever the value of n is odd, the player one is going to make the move and he is going to lose. Otherwise, player two is going to make the move and he is going to win. But we should consider a, a special case also when the initial value of all the elements and their XOR is essentially zero, right. So let us say there is a case like when we have these three elements and let us say we have B and B, right. So, what will happen? Let us say 
there are five elements so we expect player one to lose because this is odd number right but what happens if the xor of all these values is essentially zero right if the xor of all of these values is initially zero as well that means the player one does not have to make any move and he will automatically win right so this was the whole solution to this particular problem and as you can see what i have done is i first of all calculated the xor of all the values then i have tested whether the current value of n is odd or even if it is odd and the value is greater than 0 that means player 2 is going to win otherwise player 1 is going to win so this was the whole solution to this particular problem let me quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works so you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution and if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it may be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye